Hi everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So yesterday during AMD's Zen 3 reveal, we got our first taste of what a big Navi actually is. Now this has been pretty divisive across the internet. Some people think we're being debated and I'm going to talk about the reasons why here today and kind of look at what we do know at this point in time and see if there's really anything we can glean out of that. But before we get started, I want to thank everybody who supported the channel. The best way you can do that is by smashing that like button. YouTube seems to like to nerf my videos, so hitting that like button and commenting in the comment section really shows YouTube that the channel's doing well and you guys like the video. So thank you all for your support. There's also links in the description below if you want to support and help even further. All right, so AMD, during the event, they decided to tease Big Navi at the very end. And we didn't get a whole lot of information here, but what we did get were three benchmarks at 4K max quality settings. So the three games they decided to show off were Borderlands 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and Gears of War 5. Now, the reason why a lot of people are thinking that we're being debated this time around is because two of the three benchmarks are actually using Unreal Engine 4 games. And as we all know, AMD does not perform as well on Unreal Engine 4 as NVIDIA. NVIDIA actually works very closely with Epic Games to develop the Unreal Engine. However, the caveat to that is, is Gears of War is made by Microsoft and they customize the Unreal Engine to run extremely well on AMD hardware. We know this because Gears 5 runs very well on the Xbox One X and even the original Xbox One. And we've seen throughout the benchmarks that it's pretty balanced between AMD and Nvidia. Now Borderlands 3, however, is not very well optimized for AMD hardware. And it's kind of strange that they would show a game that typically does not run well on their hardware in this benchmark. And this is the reason why a lot of people are thinking that AMD is extremely confident in their upcoming big Navi RDNA 2 GPUs or RX 6000 series, which we now know is official. And I can kind of see that. I can kind of understand why people would think that AMD is highly confident because if you're showing a game that typically doesn't run well on your cards, that's going to show kind of more worst case scenario. So the guys over at Video Cards, they put together this little chart here using OC3D, Hexus, and Eurogamer's numbers to kind of see where things land. Now, most people don't benchmark Call of Duty, so we don't really have any comparisons there. But as you guys can see here, using Borderlands and Gears of War 5, the numbers that AMD are showing us are anywhere between 10% slower than the RTX 3080, up to basically matching it and anywhere in between. Now, granted, we know that it's using ultra quality and we're assuming just the straight ultra preset, but we don't know exactly which segment of each game AMD tested, nor do we really know which segment each of the reviewers tested. Now, these two games do have built-in benchmarks, so the assumption is that AMD just used the built-in benchmark, but we don't know that for sure. Also, we're not entirely sure which AMD GPU this actually is. They just said it was an RX 6000 series card. Now, for me personally, looking at these numbers, the fact that they're close to the RTX 3080 leads me to believe that it's obviously a top tier GPU. It's obviously Navi 21. It's not going to be, you know, the Navi 22, which we believe will be a GA 104 or maybe a GA 106 competitor. This is clearly the top of the line card. We just don't know which one it is. Is it the fully unlocked one? Uh, is it the one that's cut down a little bit? That we cannot say. But regardless, this gives us a pretty good idea of where the performance is going to land. On the worst case scenario, we're seeing 10% slower than the 3080 in games that AMD typically doesn't do well in. These are also in 4K, which the 3080 is exceptional at. So this is kind of like the double whammy. It's almost as if AMD is hamstringing themselves. As we know, if you've seen Steve from Hardware Unboxed, he did a really great video breaking down the 3080 and how it scales at 1080p, 720p actually, 1080p, and 1440p. You should definitely check that video out if you haven't already, but you can see that even compared to Turing, Ampere does not scale very well to 1440p or 1080p, not as well as Turing did. And also, Steve figured out that it's not always a CPU limitation. In reality, that's the other thing that a lot of people are bringing up, the fact that they use the brand new Ryzen 5900X 
CPU, which is supposed to be, you know, the fastest in gaming, which it might very well be. But at 4K ultra settings, we're going to be GPU limited here, guys. A 10900K or a 9900K, uh, that's going to match whatever AMD's new CPUs come out with at 4K. Now, at lower resolutions, this could skew things even further. And part of me thinks that's the reason why they went with 4K is because we can pretty much say that the other reviews out there will be pretty similar. Now at like 1440p, some games can be CPU limited with such powerful GPUs. So having that extra CPU performance of Zen 3 might have skewed that. So that's one reason why they may not have shown 1440p. But at the same time, we know Ampere does not scale down very well to 1440p. And I guarantee you they're going to slam that home on October 28th. Even at 4K, let's say the 3080 might be faster. AMD's card, because it's so close even at 4K, might actually be faster at 1440p, which is going to lead us to a pretty interesting conundrum here. So if you have the option of better than 3080 at 1440p numbers, or better at 4K with the 3080, which one is most people are gonna go with? I mean, most gamers are using 1080p or 1440p. Living room gamers are obviously moving to 4K and beyond, but most of you guys I know are still 1080p or 1440p at most. So this might be an interesting strategy for AMD if they're really going to target that, still deliver greater than 60 FPS performance, at 4K, which I believe is the main reason why they chose these benchmarks, showing all these games, max settings, running over 60 FPS at 4K. Alrighty guys, so with the very limited information that we have here, we can glean a few things. We obviously have a 3080-ish competitor, and we obviously have an idea that AMD is very confident in this release. First off, they didn't need to show it here at all. If they weren't confident, I don't think that they would have teased it at all. Uh, secondly, they chose benchmarks that are not super favorable to them. I mean, Call of Duty usually is, and Gears is pretty balanced. So I guess you could say they picked one benchmark that does kind of favor them, one benchmark that's pretty much balanced, and then they picked one that's not so good for them. Typically, when you're marketing something, you want to show your product in the absolute best light. So this is actually odd. This is an odd choice for them to do but it does show that they're confident in the product. And then, like I said, the fact that it's 4K and it's close to the 3080, at lower resolutions, it might actually be superior. And we also don't know if this is the biggest version of Navi or if maybe it's a slightly cut down version. So there's a lot of ifs and buts and whatever out there, but at this point in time, the takeaway really is just this. 4K 60 gaming on an AMD card, that's something a lot of you guys have been wanting. I've been seeing it in comment sections forever. Uh, looks like you're going to get that this time. So that's the statement I think that they wanted to make to you, is that this card is coming and it will do what you want. And then the next thing is obviously it's close to a 3080. Um, I don't think that they were really trying to make that statement at this point in time, but we kind of inferred that using other people's information. Now, I would take that all with a grain of salt until we get independent reviews, but at the very least, we know it should be somewhere in that ballpark. And then, like I said, we know that the 3080, not so good at 1440p, so that might close that gap right there. So anybody thinking that Big Navi was going to be a 3070 competitor, you can throw that out the window because that's obviously not the case. It's going to be faster than that. Is it faster than a 3080? Well, at this point in time, we can say no, uh, but that doesn't mean that there's not a bigger card that might be more competitive or faster. We just don't know. Now, this does land kind of in that middle ground that I've been talking about, that 15% faster than a 2080 Ti. These numbers do show that it's obviously faster than that, but it at 10% slower, which some of these benchmarks did show... Maybe, maybe that isn't too far off. Maybe it's 20% faster under certain conditions. Maybe it's just as fast. Maybe it's faster in some. It's really kind of interesting. But overall, I don't think we're being debated. I think the whole point of them showing that off was to obviously build hype, get people like me to do videos, to get you guys even more hyped. And in that, they succeeded. And for all of those gamers out there that don't want to buy an NVIDIA card, that do want to game at 4K, 
well, you now know that there is going to be an option for you. So we're just a few weeks away from knowing for sure. So I'm really excited to see what AMD has here. What I'm hearing in the background is AMD do have a few tricks up their sleeves. So it's not just going to be straight. Look at the performance. This is where we are, like with what they did with Zen 3. Like, here's Intel. Here's us. We're better. It's going to be more nuanced and complicated than that. There's going to be a lot of new features talked about and things of that nature. So I'm really interested to hear that kind of stuff. I don't have any details on any, any of that. I'm just hearing the rumblings in the background, but it sounds really, really interesting. So alrighty, guys, just like with the Zen 3 event, I will be live streaming the RDNA 2 reveal. So if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Celso, once again, will be joining me on that live stream. So you guys get two YouTubers' opinions live as everything unfolds. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. Once again, smash that like button if you like these kind of videos. Subscribe, share with friends. That really helps me out. Once again, links if you want to go Patreon or PayPal or any of that kind of stuff in the description below. But that's really all I have for you here today. I'll catch you guys in the next video.